Hi everyone, I'm Tim Eads of Rug Tufting Machines at tuftinggun.com. Today I'm going to be doing the ultimate guide to rug finishing. These are This is one of my most frequently asked questions of how to finish the rugs. I've spent about two years testing different things. I'm really excited to share my latest discoveries. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so we're going to talk about finishing really fast. And how you finish it really depends on what you want to do with it in the end. So... Here's a, a quick little breakdown. In all cases, you want to glue on the loom and let it dry. Okay? <clears throat> These the, the ways that you finish it can actually be broken down into three categories. First category is wall pieces. Second category is rug. So anything for the floor. Third category is garment. Okay. In all three cases, you're going to need some kind of glue. For a wall piece, we found that Elmer's or PVA glue is great. For a rug, we're going to go with AAT 1132. For a garment, you need some latex. And we found that Holden's HX807 is great. You also may or may not need a backing. So, some kind of backing that's going to protect the rug for the floor. And there's really no backing necessary if you're doing a wall piece. For a rug piece, we want some kind of backing, and we have three different options that we're going to talk about. And in the garment case, you're going to want some kind of lining for your, for your garment. And this is typically, say, for a jacket, and you would have a jacket. Um, lining. So let's uh, walk through this. Okay, so before we get into the specifics of talking about what kinds of glue for each uh, category, uh, I'm going to show you what we do, how we glue the, the rug on the loom. So the first step is to apply the glue while it's stretched on the loom. This is going to help stabilize the rug itself. It's going to keep its shape. It won't curl when you take it off. We use the same technique for all three categories. There's a couple of different ways you can apply the glue. Uh, the first little section I'm showing you how to apply it with a brush. If the glue is thin enough, you can apply it with a brush. Uh, if it's not thin enough, you can apply it with a palette knife like you see here. You want to make sure that every single section of the rug is completely covered. After the entire rug is completely covered in glue, you let the glue dry, and once that's completed, then you can cut it off and pull it off of the loom. Now we'll go into the specifics of the three different categories. So this is a miniature uh, test piece that I did for one of my wall pieces. And you can see here it's in an abstract shape. And what I did was actually glued it on the loom, let it dry, and then I cut it off. So this is what the back looks like. And this is the glue I use here. So this is just Elmer's glue. It's kind of stiff. I just apply this with a brush on the loom. Okay. After the glue's dry, you can cut it out in this shape and then fold over the edges and then I glue again. Sometimes I use hot glue depending on how uh, fast I want to be. But I try to be as clean as possible. Okay. There's no reason to put a, a backing on this. You're going to be protecting it most likely with something else on the back. You can if you want. 
After I get this glued and dried, I'm going to show you one of my pieces. So this is uh, one of my uh, wall hanging pieces. And what I've done here is mounted it to a board. And you can see here, if I peel up the edge, I'm actually going in and just with this folded edge, I just attach it to this board. And I go around, trace, trace the, the outer edge of the board, cut the board, and then I have something to mount it to. And to mount it, I typically go in with staples and staple through the front in a lot of different places so it's not gonna move. And then to hang it, I have a metal cleat that you can you know attach to the board and then this is like super easy this is great for medium to large work <clears throat> for a rug piece this is one of my rug pieces and what we're going to be doing i'm going to be walking you through the steps on putting a backing on this okay so let's talk about backings So let's talk about a couple of different backings here. I actually sell three backings now. Um, I have the original backing, which you can see here. So this is um, just like a woven cotton polyester backing. And this is a really good protective backing. It won't show dirt very easily. I'm carrying a new backing that is this felt backing. So this is a, actually a, a recycled polyester felt. And this is the one that we're going to be using today. And the final backing that I have is a no skid backing. So it has the felt on this side, but then there's actually a no skid or a rubber backing on this side. So this is really good for areas where you don't want the rug to move around. It's going to protect it from there. So <clears throat> we have our piece here. So what we found is that this is a two-stage process. So stage one is actually gluing it on the loom, letting that dry. And then after it's dry, cutting it out like you see here. And then we'll come in and put the backing on it. Okay. Now to put the backing, we use this Roberts 8200. This is a spray adhesive, it's a no VOC, and it sprays in a web and it's a contact adhesive. So what a contact adhesive does is you basically spray two sides and then once it gets tacky, you stick those together, okay? Now, I don't wanna get my table sticky, so you can do this outside if you want. So what I typically do is go in, and obviously if, you're, if you have some of your, If this is a little wider border that you have, you don't have to mask it off like this. And for today's purposes, we're going to be putting this backing on it. Okay. So step one is you want to go in. So I'm just going to be applying this glue over the whole surface. Okay, so this is done. Now I can just peel this up and move it out of the way. I don't need the tape anymore. Don't let this stick to each other. Now I can slide this out of the way. And now I can do my backing. You want to make sure to cover every piece, every area. 
you don't want to miss you don't want to miss a section. Okay, now this is glued, and you just want to give it a couple of minutes, see how tacky this is already getting. Okay, if you have a large piece, you're going to want to do this with two people. So now, I'm just going to take this piece and carefully drop this down. I'm actually going to fold this over here because I don't need this. And then I really rub this all the way in. So this dries fairly quickly. And now I have a nice little nice little rug. Now, this is some pretty thick stuff, so you know, I may want, sometimes I actually put two layers of this um, if I want this to be a little softer, or I'll use a thicker uh, backing. So after this is done, and this dries really quickly, I'm going to go in here and actually trim down the edges. And you want to do about a half an inch. I'm actually going to go a little bit closer. So what's going to happen is this is going to, we're going to talk about actually uh, binding it off. So, you know, this needs some kind of binding on the edges to be like actually finished. Okay, so here we have the finished kind of piece. And you can see that the backing is really stuck on there. Now, this, this rug is not done. So what we have to do is actually apply a binding to it. Okay, so let's skip over. So let's talk about finishing and binding really fast. So basically, this rug here is not enough. So you need some kind of finishing thing to actually uh, close off the edge here, okay? Otherwise, it's just going to break down. There's a couple of different options. One is simply a twill tape binding here, and one is a serge binding here. What we've discovered is that most U.S. cities, a lot of major cities, have services, companies that actually do rug finishing or rug binding. They actually do this for you. Um, there's an ongoing list on the website, but basically we've just been taking these to a company and then they actually do the finish work. So the one we use is Bond Products and this isn't a paid sponsorship at all. They're just the one locally. So this is the kind of bindings that we can get there. 
They also have a twill tape binding. And basically they're just simply running this carpet through their serger and they're getting, you're getting this kind of look here. For serging, which I personally like better, is more of this kind of edge. And they have a bunch of different colors of thread. So you can actually find something that you're happy with. And this is kind of what the corner looks like. Okay, and they do this every day, so it's really fast and cheap. The, the, this kind of binding costs typically about 75 cents a linear foot. And the surge binding costs about $4 a linear foot. So for a piece like this, it would be you know, somewhere around $15 to $20. If you don't have access to a serger like this or you know, don't want to send it to a company, you can actually um, do this by hand, just with a whip stitch. If you look online, you can find people finishing rugs by hand. But this is, if you're not wanting to spend a million hours like hand sewing, this is a really good option. That's got that covered. Now we're going to jump just and talk quickly about garments. So this is parts left over from a jacket that I am making or made. And we're using this Holden's Latex HX807. And this is a brushable latex. So we actually use this to, to just brush right on. And you can see one of the downsides to it is it yellows when it dries. But it's super flexible, so you can see that I'm getting, like I can really fold this and get a really good drape on it um, as if it were a garment. There's nowhere near the kind of drape that I can get. This is so stiff for this rug that it ends up being unusable. So obviously you'd probably want a lining on this and to do the lining you would most likely just hand stitch that lining on or you could actually take it to a carpet serger and have them sew that binding on. Those are a couple of options. You could also, uh, if you use a straight stitch industrial machine, you could stitch right along this edge. I just want to say thanks for joining me today. These are, you know, discoveries that we've made obviously you know, I don't think I'm an expert. I've just made these discoveries over the last couple of years that I've been working with this. Uh, if you have some tips or other suggestions, we're always open for that. We're going to continue to test products and we'll let you know uh, how that works. Um, in the meantime, happy tufting.